I'm very interested in all of the creatures and animals that you find in the ancient Irish myths. Now, I have particular interest in those that are associated in some way with the Boyne River or the, the River Valley, uh, with the Tuatha de Danann, with Newgrange and the ancient monuments. So, for example, um, I suppose the first creature that you encounter in the myths uh, about the Boyne Valley is the Mata, which is this mysterious four-headed, 100-legged monster that was said to have been killed at a mysterious stone at Newgrange called the Lech Ben and dismembered and thrown piece by piece into the River Boyne. But there are other creatures. So, for example, the swan. Um, a particularly famous story about the swan is the, the, the romance of Angus and Care from an ancient tale called Ashlinga Anguso, which is the, the dream of Angus. And Angus has to take the form of a swan in order to be with this maiden, this, um, I suppose, this mysterious woman who appears to him in a dream. And uh, basically, when he eventually finds her, he has to take the form of a swan in order to have her love. And they fly together uh, to Brunabonia and uh, fly into Newgrange. Another very famous swan myth associated with Newgrange is the, the story of how Cuchulain uh, came to be. Um, he was known as Setanta when he was born and the story is that his mother Dechtene uh, came to Newgrange from Awan Macha uh, which is you know um, the Armagh in, in modern day Northern Ireland and uh, she comes to Newgrange with loads of other women who've basically taken the form of swans and while she's there in the winter time uh, Lou MacEthlin or Lou Lovefather as we might know him uh, comes to her in a dream and tells her that she's pregnant. And this is how uh, Satanta comes into being. Uh, another creature that we encounter in mythology quite a bit is the cow and the bull. So there's lots of bovine mythology. And in actual fact, a Bowen, who's the goddess after whom the river is named, is the white cow goddess. And uh, we can't forget, of course, the Battle of the Bulls in the Town Bow Kulga, which, of course, features the aforementioned Cúchulain, in which the two bulls, uh, the Finn Benach and the Dun Kulga, eventually have this fight, in which, ironically, uh, the Dun Kulga uh, dismembers the Finn Benach and drops his bits around the country, it's sort of reflective, maybe a little bit, of the story of the Mata, uh, and uh, possibly. Um, echoing uh, some sort of Indo-European creation myth. Another creature that features quite prominently is the pig. Uh, so, for example, we meet the pig with uh, Lou's father, Cian, who um, is being hunted basically by the sons of Turin. And uh, he takes the form of a pig in order to avoid them. But I think uh, this is from memory now. I'm not reading this. I think um, a couple of the sons of Turin, a couple of the brothers, uh, take the form of hounds and um, basically sniff him out of the swine herd. And before they kill him, uh, Cian asks to be returned to his human form, which they allow, but then they kill him anyway. But the pig is a very important um, creature in mythology. There's a tale uh, which describes the Tuatha de Danann as being a swine herd. And I'm particularly interested in the fact that at some of the pits that were found around uh, the perimeter of the Newgrange Mound, there were sort of bones found in them. As you might expect, you know, from feasting and from, you know, I mean, people in prehistory needed to eat, obviously. Um, the staple diet in the Mesolithic before Newgrange uh, in terms of meat and fish would have consisted of wild boar and the likes of salmon and uh, trout and eel. Um, so it, I'm, I'm interested in the fact that some of the pits at Newgrange contained large amounts of pig bone um, disproportionate to what was found at other uh, Neolithic sites um, and, and, and uh, pigs you know that the eating of pigs has an association with uh, feasting and also then of course is the story of the Dagda who has two pigs in Newgrange uh, one of which is 
roasting on a spit ready to be eaten and i think the other is fattened and ready for the slaughter and of course <coughs> the dogta has a cauldron um from which uh, no man should go thirsty and you know the idea is that it has an everlasting supply the creature that uh, i wanted to give specific mention of tonight has already been briefly mentioned is the salmon and probably the most famous story, as it were, associated with a creature uh, linked to the Boyne is the story of the Salmon of Knowledge. And the Salmon of Knowledge was said, in different versions of the story, was said to have either swam in the well of Segish, which is the well from which the Boyne River was said to have sprung. Uh, it's, it's known today as um, the Trinity Well, uh, near the village of Carberry in County Kildare and it's very close to a, a, a little stream that basically um, some might consider to be the, the very beginnings of the Boyne River. Um, in other versions of the story the salmon is said to swim in, in a place called Fiex Pool which is located very close to Rossnery on the bend of the Boyne River between Rossnery and the great monuments across the river, uh, between say Rossnery and Nouth in that in that region. So I'm just going to read to you briefly um, Thomas Rolleston's version of the story of how Finn McCool um, gained all of the knowledge of the salmon. Uh, Rolleston says that Finn went to learn the accomplishments of poetry and science from an ancient sage and druid named Finnegus, who dwelt on the river Boyne. Here, in a pool of this river, under boughs of hazel, which from which dropped the nuts of knowledge on the stream, lived Fintan, the salmon of knowledge, which whoso ate of him would enjoy all the wisdom of the ages. Now, I'm very interested in the fact that the salmon of knowledge, in some versions, uh, of the story has a name and that that name is Finton because there is a very very famous story and several iterations of it uh, concerning uh, an ancient seer an ancient druid uh, a sort of a wise uh, figure of mythology uh, who's called Finton Mac Borkra. and the story of Finton is that he survived the great flood and um, the flood that we know as the the flood of Noah the great flood of the bible and that um, he did so by transforming into different creatures. So when he went to the top of a mountain, I think in Tipperary, um, called Tull Tunja, uh, Fenton took the form of a salmon uh, in order that he could swim in the waters because the waters overtook the top of the mountain. Now, I'm not sure if it was a cave or a cairn, um, but he swam basically as a salmon until the waters receded. Then he took the form of an eagle and later he takes the form of a hawk. And the funny thing about or the curious thing about the story of Fintan MacBorkra is what he seems to represent is because he, he appears again in another legend, uh, which is called the settling of the manor of Tara, in which um, there's a dispute about how much land the king is entitled to um, when he becomes the king of Tara and nobody actually knows by what edict and by what law um, you know this is decreed how, how do we know how much land the king has and so eventually the only one that can answer the question is, is Fintan uh, the great Fintan MacBorkra who comes back Fintan is said to have lived for 5,000 years has lived from the time of the flood is almost eternal as it were in nature and uh, uh, Fintan basically just realize, makes the men of Ireland, uh, the people of Ireland, realise that they've just forgotten, uh, not so much that they, they don't know. Um, what he represents really is the survival of ancient wisdom through the ages. And I suppose if you think about the story of the Great Flood and the fact that Fintan is the sole survivor, he came here with uh, Kezair, who is the granddaughter of Noah, or at least that's what the mythology says and of, of course there are theories that there's some contrivance there to try and connect you know uh, the early Irish race as it were with biblical figures um, which may or may not have been the work of Christian scribes who were largely responsible 
for transcribing and for, uh, I suppose, preserving a lot of the early Irish mythology when they wrote uh, a lot of the myths down in their manuscripts from, say, the 10th, uh, 11th, 12th, 13th centuries. So um, anyway, um, Finn McCool uh, consults the, the druid Finnegus on the River Boyne. And um, according to this version, Fintan, the salmon of knowledge, uh, swam in uh, Fiex Pool, uh, which, as I said, is located at Rosnery. Finnegus had sought many a time to catch this salmon, but failed until Finn had come to be his pupil. Then one day he caught it and he gave it to Finn to cook, bidding him eat none of it himself, but to tell him when it was ready. When the lad brought the salmon, Finnegus saw his countenance was changed. Hast thou eaten of the salmon? he asked. Nay, said Finn, but when I turned it on the spit, my thumb was burnt and I put it in my mouth. Take the salmon of knowledge and eat it then, said Finnegus, for in thee the prophecy is come true. And now go hence, for I can teach thee no more. And the prophecy to which he mentioned was the fact that apparently somebody called Finn would inherit the knowledge of the salmon of knowledge. After that, Finn became as wise as he was strong and bold. And it is said that whenever he wished to, to divine what would befall, or what was happening at a distance, he had but to put his thumb in his mouth and bite it, or in some versions, suck it. And the knowledge he wished for would be his. Uh, another very interesting aspect of the whole story is the fact that it, uh, the knowledge that the salmon gained, which was then passed on to uh, Finn, uh, was gained through eating the hazelnuts which fell from these mysterious trees that grew over either the well of Sagish or in, in the other version, um, Fake's Pool. And I suppose to me what the, the the nine magic hazel trees really represent are the trees of, you know, Eden, as it were, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, etc., etc. And <coughs> it's almost like, you know, eating the forbidden fruit and that the fish somehow eats the nuts that fall from the tree and somehow ends up um, being consumed then by a human who gains all the knowledge. Uh, but I think that the underlying sort of archetype of the story is the idea of the survival of wisdom. Now, in this case, it's fated, I suppose, that Finn is the one who gains all the knowledge. Um, Finnegus was the one who was waiting for the salmon for the time when, you know, he could catch the salmon and cook it and eat it. But it turns out that um, Finn is the one who's actually destined uh, uh, for, f to this end. And of course, Finn and the Fianna, you know, occupy a sort of a very um, famous place in mythology. And I will talk more about that in another talk, uh, in particular uh, about the connections that the Fianna end up having with uh, the two headed Danon. And remember, all of this happens within sight of the great monuments. So uh, Fiex Pool is just literally um, located on the River Boyne between Rossnery and Nouth and would be within sight of Newgrange, maybe a mile or so distant. Um, so all uh, a very prestigious area from the point of view of the mythology and the monuments and of course the fact that the Boyne itself is associated with, with wisdom from an early age. And even Finn's name uh, means uh, it can mean fair as in fair as in bright and maybe fair haired but also Finn has been connected with the idea of brightness as in wisdom and uh, something that uh, Finn obviously acquires through magical means.